It seems that you can't turn on the news nowadays without there being a story about the abuse of power. Whether it's the Koch brothers buying up politicians, the military executing people without trial, the police beating up and killing innocent civilians, or the government misusing revenues to fund a needless war machine, the result is the same. Those with power use it to the detriment of those without. The other day I was watching a documentary on the Learn Liberty channel about being born into debt. It noted that today's newborns are each born with $54,000 worth of debt. That figure represents their share of the US government's $17 trillion debt. If it can be argued that the debt of a nation is owned by its citizens, then that means that whether we want to or not, we take on the debt merely by being born. That's like the concept of original sin, but with measurable consequences. For instance, the size of the nation's debt affects the level of taxation, the quality and extent of services that are provided, and ultimately the cost of products and services, the amount of disposable income that each of us is left with at the end of the month, and consequently the quality of life that each of us experiences. In theory, our parents and grandparents voted in the governments that accumulated that debt, just as we vote in the governments that continue to accumulate it now. But in reality, democracy in America and Europe is in tatters. Special interest groups, banks, lobbyists, corporates and the EEC all have disproportionate influence. In the US, the people that spend the most money have the greatest influence, whilst in Europe the unelected politicians of the European Economic Committee set policies and laws, as does the European Court of Human Rights. Thus you can easily see that whilst their laws apply to us, we have no meaningful way to say what those laws are. I've seen people talk about the social contract, the nebulous yet compelling idea that each of us agrees merely by being a citizen in a community to abide by the laws and usually accepted parameters of behaviour for that community. But if we have agreed to such a contract, it's an agreement by default and none of us ever got to see the terms of that contract before agreeing. In fact, the so-called social contract is almost identical to the idea of religious belief in that we mostly accept the beliefs of our parents and communities, without ever challenging them. There is the assumption, reinforced by law and even imprisonment, that we agree to obey the laws, pay our taxes, work hard and act within the confines of generally accepted behaviour. But I want to ask whether it is reasonable for us to comply with that belief, especially in a system over which we have no meaningful influence. Clearly there are benefits to living in a community, economies of scale in the production of food, goods and services, the ability to better defend ourselves against those who would impose their will on us, and shared intellectual resources leading to a continual progression in human living standards, technology and medical capabilities. But perhaps the most valuable is simply living with a collection of others who very broadly shares your values or world view. However, increasingly it seems to me that the advantages of these benefits are being outweighed by the costs. For instance, in principle the police force is a necessary and beneficial organisation, protecting us, working for our general interests and helping to reduce our risk of harm from violence or fraud. But when the judiciary is bought by corporates, jails are run for profits, the police regularly get away with beating and murdering the population with the complicity of the force at large, and a vast percentage of the population is imprisoned for victimless drug crimes, it's time to re-evaluate whether the police are really serving the community at all. Likewise, there is a largely unspoken belief that when you pay your taxes, that money is used for the good of the nation and its citizens. Sadly, a significant percentage of your tax goes to support a military that's at best grossly inefficient and overly jingoistic, and at worst run for the exclusive gain of the industrial military complex, and a government that uses its might to steal from and bully those too weak to oppose it, in the interests of a select few. No matter in which direction one looks, compliance with the social contract is an increasingly asymmetrical relationship where the average citizen becomes emotionally and financially poorer so that the elite can become richer. Over the past 50 years, workers have massively increased productivity whilst earning much less in real terms, and still employers fight for the right to provide worse worker conditions and care. At the same time, the owners and the shareholders receive unprecedented levels of profits. Although the Tea Party and other so-called libertarians argue for a world of zero regulation, 
The fact is, we already have a dismal foretaste of how such a world would be in today's world. Far from being the utopia in which market forces, collective customer pressure and common self-interest produce a self-regulating world, free from the corruption of government influence, the reality is, in a libertarian world, the rich and powerful become more so, whilst the rest of us become more powerless, just as it was in Europe before the Magna Carta. The sad fact is, even under the guise of democracy, the world is hurtling towards a dictatorial age of fascism, where the state says jump and your only permitted response is how high. The right of expression is being curtailed, avenues for doing so are being monitored and closed, and the wealthy lean heavily on those who dare oppose them. Public outrage and civil disobedience have always been vital engines for change and improvement. In the world of global media and public opinion shaped by a select few with their own agendas, it's harder than ever to overcome the carefully sculpted reality that those in power would have us accept. But now, more than ever, whilst we are still permitted the freedom to express our views via social media and the internet, it's time to educate the masses, raise our voices and say, no, I do not agree to this social contract, where the sweat of the many supports the greed of the few. Hey guys, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please take the time to rate and comment, and it would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe. Thank you.